Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, finally, uh, we are connected. Yes, we are. <laughs> and I'm chatting today on you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm, you know, I have a tech business, I'm pretty sure I know, uh, I, I know how to do this, so, <laughs> but. Like, I mean, same with me, I was like, I have my techie, and what's going on, kind of precedes uh, our talent, but yeah, here we are, welcome to Pitch Investors Life, I'm so glad I'm able to talk to you, yesterday I could not, um, because, again, technology, but um, yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited your project and i think uh, let me first start with um that uh, about a little bit about me and i would love to know a little bit about you so i'm a general partner at sportfest which is a venture arm of nfla and we invest in traditional and digital assets of sports and i invest in technologies where sports is one of the use cases and it can go into other verticals also so some of our uh, case studies and use cases that I want to invest in blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, web text, drone technologies, OTT, uh, material science. So a variety of areas which is touching sports and can go into other verticals. Um, previously, I worked in IBM, HP, Goldman Sachs, Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, that's a little bit about me. So I'd love to know about you and your product. Great, great. Well, my name is Brandon Bergeson, and I'm the CEO and founder of Moby and Moby Pay. I've been working on the project for a little over a year now. I uh, have a background in commodities, uh, forex trading. I was in the mortgage business since I was about 19 and ended up building a, um, a platform, kind of like an insurance model for mortgages, uh, a tech, uh, more of a tech side of the financial space uh, for a while. And was doing that uh, up until about um, nine months ago, where I completely um, got out of the, the financial space, uh, mortgages, and focused 100% on Moby. Um, as you know, it was it was that time that I couldn't stay up till three in the morning and sleep four hours a day, and I had to focus on one thing. Um, so um, you know, married three kids and have a supportive wife, and uh, sees the vision and the dream, and just. Uh, we're working hard here to, you know, bring some technology. I've always been a big fan of technology. I've had some great mentors in multiple different verticals. So um, I know a lot about different uh, different areas and different spaces and mm -hmm. I'm really, really passionate about the payment space and yeah. um, blockchain technology. Uh, you know, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, a friend told me about it and completely changed my life. I locked myself in a room for a week and uh, the, the light bulbs went off across the board and uh, I've been I've been hooked ever since and you know definitely believe it's the you know next internet and there's a lot of use cases and things to help and you know primarily we were, we're, we're you know there's a lot of payments guys out there in the crypto space a lot of guys doing things and we're primarily focused on you know the unbanked cross-border remittance but also utilizing mobile payments um, which I, I truly believe is the future um, to, to really facilitate people and, you know, developing countries like, you know, Mexico, Philippines, Africa. And I really believe that, you know, decentralizing, you know, uh, you know, money, um, it will help commerce in, uh, in those developing areas. And I'm so passionate about doing that. And uh, um, so that's a little bit about myself. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, how do you differentiate your product with a lot of other products that are actually serving to the unbanked people. Well, I mean, our product is, is, is simple. So, I mean, we've developed a kind of three different product lines. We're developing a complete ecosystem. So we're not focused like on crypto payments and having a debit card connected to a crypto app, right? We're, we're, we're focused on the, the whole thing, whether it be the users, whether it be the merchants, um, or whether it be, you know, just, uh, you know, anyone in different areas of the world. So, uh, or banks. So essentially, we have three products. We have a mainstream consumer wallet, uh, which is more like a Venmo cash app. Um, same functionalities, but we have mobile payments uh, set up with that, and I can get more into that. Uh, we have a crypto wallet and trading app. That's where all the exchange happens for the currency that we can do in real time um, with uh, for free uh, with and you know done instantly. And then we have a merchant gateway. So we have a, a you know extensive user adoption model for merchants and users. A lot of people are concentrating on one, but we're, we're, we're actually working on the entire ecosystem that together, I believe, will help, you know, spur 
you know, these type of crypto payments and regular payments globally and help those unbanked using, um, utilizing the Stellar network. So we, we're built on Stellar and utilizing that. We think that's the, the best way to go for our model um, moving forward. Okay, why Stellar? Like, why do you think Stellar or why not EOS, Ethereum? Uh, I can tell you exactly why. Great question. So uh, Ethereum is very costly and it's slow, just like Bitcoin. It doesn't process trans transactions instantly. Uh, Ethereum was built for smart contracts features that has a lot of use cases for, for those things, but not when in regards to payments. Um, so to get, kind of get, tell you a little story, um, you know, writing, writing this white paper, I had the vision, locked myself, like I said, for about a month and just started writing. Uh, and then I, after I wrote it, I then went and looked for a, you know, blockchain to, to be utilized for what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, I looked at Ethereum, everyone was going the ERC-20 route, um, you know, for the ICOs. And then, you know, I'm, but I always, you know, popular opinion is typically wrong in history. Um, so I tried to look at other, um, other options. And when I looked into Stellar, it's like the gates of heaven opened up and it was, it was made for what we were doing. And I can explain why. Number one, uh, 100,000 transactions um, cost one penny on the Stellar network. So, you know, compared to Ethereum, that's a big, that's a big swing. Uh, other is speed. It, Ethereum has gas that's involved. Um, and with this, there, it, it settles transactions, not just, but it settles transactions in two to five seconds. So you're talking about a payment network that's built for cross-border admittance. It's built for the unbanked um, uh, into a, a great, uh, you know, uh, something new that's that's come out recently is IBM built their entire WorldWire um, uh, blockchain on Stellar's network. Uh, they're connected to 92% of the banks globally, and six of the banks have already signed up with IBM WorldWire. So you have, you have a monster, you know, a top 10 uh, global company, you know, joining Stellar for the same reasons we do. We it's easy to use uh, the crossword, the speed, and you know, the able to exchange you know currencies, whether it be fiat or crypto. Um, and one last thing I'll mention is Stellar's built what's called an anchoring system, and this is the beauty behind it. They have local anchors and local currencies around the world already established in the Philippines and Africa, and those those anchors provide liquidity and local currency. So it's more or less of a peer-to-peer -peer kind of exchange, and you can settle in real time. So therefore, that's that's how that cross-border remittance and mechanism works. Um, it's you know. There, we have multiple different ways to, to make money, but, um, you know, I'm passionate about the cross-border remittance space, you know, because I see uh, developing countries and poor countries and, you know, you know, less fortunate getting taken advantage of the likes of, you know, um, you know, the big companies um, uh, like, and, uh, what's that? And the government and the currency rates. Yeah, government, currency rates, you know, and, and so, and, and, th and those are the things, I mean, there's, you know, the system, um, you know, charge 10 to 20% to send money cross border, um, you know, to Mexico. And, you know, it, it's very hard. Um, you know, they're making, you know, companies are making $6 billion a year, uh, you know, just, just from cross border admittance. And so we believe with this mechanism, be able to send it, it, it helps with a lot of regulatory issues. Uh, another reason we built on Stellar um, is, you know, we're finding from, you know, from a compliance standpoint, uh, our chief legal counsel is former chief counsel at the New York Stock Exchange uh, and also former SEC. He was the second person I brought on my team. Um, and, you know, we're also looking, you know, you know, starting discussions with the SEC of uh, having our, our token as deemed as a commodity because it's built on the Stellar network. And that's exactly what it does. It's kind of hard to di differentiate on Ethereum because there's multiple use cases. So in our, in our case, we believe that we, uh, we're building on the right platform that's a lot of longevity, and we we like the the team over at Stellar. They're they're great, and uh, the so board work. Where's the what's the state of your product? Is it alpha, beta, or are you, is it already in use? Uh, we we just finished our beta, so um, we kind of did things backwards than most people. Uh, we know last year was the ICO craze, and you know we started to to you know go down that path, and you know the bear market happened, so. Um, I, I bootstrapped um, everything personally, everything that I made in all my businesses. I've worked my entire life to get to a point to do what I'm doing by myself and have my vision come alive. And I've had some family around, um, you know, some, you know, private token sales here and there, not, nothing much 
but we have completed our, our back end beta. Okay. Uh, and our, and, our um, and that's right now we have our user web wallet that, that is launched. I'm happy to send you some logins for that. Uh, we also have our entire infrastructure and back end system built, um, working, tested, and currently functioning. So we built it as an off chain um, solution. Okay. Um, but we have integrated, we have different extensions and we have integrated with Stellar, Bitcoin, and Ethereum blockchains. Uh, we're currently live on Stellar's exchange. Um, and, you know, so all of our ledgering system, all of our user authentication, security, we, we've had the core system built. All the APIs um, will be done this month, all the SDKs, everything. So then the core technology, then we can start to build out our business use for Mobi. But we did that purposely so we can have a white label solution for other businesses that want to use um, our, our solution that just need the core tech and the APIs to build on top of it moving forward. And that's, again, one of our business models is a white labeling solution. So that's, that's completely done. And, uh, you know, I can send you some videos of the demo, the back end, see how robust it is. And, um, and we're, we're finalizing our mobile apps as well. And uh, those will be um, uh, coming live. So we have a mainstream mobile app uh, for the mainstream consumers. So, you know, our, our, and we have a crypto app. So the reason we did two different apps, um, sorry to segue there, is because we're, we're not going after the crypto user. We're going after the mainstream user and we have a user experience that, you know, is not complicated for, you know, the normal, you know, grandma or teenager to understand, right? That's, you know, less than 1% of the world knows about crypto. We, we build, we're building the mainstream consumer app that everyone can use, very easy. And then secondary to that, we're building the, um, the crypto app and they function kind of like Facebook and Facebook Messenger, right? They're two separate apps, same authentication, same logins, but they're two different ecosystems, two different user interfaces. Um, the one is, you know, because we're building on regulatory compliance in the US, we're looking to bring in some banking APIs to our mainstream consumer wallet that we really can't have anything crypto based in this wallet, but over here we can. So. Um, our token kind of integrates the purpose of our token on uh, Stellar is the, the, the pure utility of it is to provide that exchange between fiat and fiat, crypto and crypto and crypto and fiat. So tell, talk to me about the white labeling solution that you have done. So talk to me about some of the projects that you're doing. You must be working with various partners, um, strategic partners, right? Right. We have a, so I have a couple um, uh, partners and to, to talk to you about. We do have some significant launch partners in place um, and we're trying to do one, uh, basically a online partner for online checkout. Right. So basically a checkout shopping cart function to use our payment solution, kind of like PayPal did online right. uh, as a, a mobile uh, a mobile app kind of usage. And we're also looking for a physical uh, partner for for our physical merchant checkout. So the first one I'll tell you about is a company called Trip Rides. Uh, we're currently in the process of finalizing um, things with them, and we we, we discuss the initial uh, stages of integrating with them. So they are, kind of, is they are a uh, what's that? What, what kind of company is that? Trip Rides. It, it's a it's a disrupt. It's um you know disrupt is a keyword, but it, it's a it's a new rideshare business. It's a software service model. Um, so instead of getting paid as a driver with Uber and Lyft is 60 to 65%, you're making 100% of what you make. Um, and you're just paying a, a licensing fee per month. Uh, they have an amazing user adoption strategy. Uh, so essentially, the, the, the rider needs to pay the driver, right? And then also the corporate company, their booking fee. So we are the technology that will come into that, uh, to be able to pay that directly to the uh, to the driver. The driver doesn't need a bank account or anything like that. They can do and no, no merchant accounts are needed. So we're, we're that mechanism. So we have a revenue model there, um, you know, directly uh, with the, you know, the drivers paying their subscription and the, and the riders paying the drivers. But the great thing about it is they all have to have Moby in order to transact. So not only do we get a revenue stream, but we get active user adoption. Right. I, so I totally love this. Um, so, um, let me tell I mean, how can I help you, where, you at what stage you are that I can help you, especially in, because I think that this is a pretty cool solution and I would love to know some of the other cool details like transaction per uh, seconds, how much it is, but where do you think I can come and help you with introductions and other things? 
That's great. Yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, uh, I was talking to uh, our lead developer today is I, I feel like I've making a 30 course meal for the last year and making sure everything is hot, you know, all the team members and we have a pretty extensive team, which I can talk to you about, you know, everyone believes in the project and I've gotten to the point where everything's ready to, it's ready, it's time to eat. And so I, it's, you know, that's why I'm re-engaging and, and really looking for, you know, the seed capital that we need just to get to the next round of, um, you know, of, of funding we have, uh, you know, uh, we have some term sheets from a private equity firm for a, a, a good amount in place, but we need to kind of, we need to, we don't, we need to start building the team and getting our base done and getting, finalizing our products so we can get to market in the next, you know, three, four to six months. Mm -hmm. um, that also, we're, we're just trying to get through the seed round so we can get to that, that next level. And we, you know, just to start to generating revenue, because realistically, the, as soon as we launch our, you know, consumer app, we we start making money right away. Right. It's not like something we're put it, digging money into development. The core of it's done. Majority of our spend moving forward will be towards marketing and user adoption, and we have some significant user adoption strategies, which is a key component that a lot of these crypto companies or you know blockchain companies are missing. They're, they have great ideas, but they, the branding is not there. They don't have any. They don't have any clear revenue models. And they don't have a user adoption strategy. And I believe that we have. I would them. love to see your user adoption strategy. How are you raising money through a security token offering or, as you said, like uh, through term sheets? So is it a convertible note or an equity? Note? We're, we're doing it. We've done a convertible note uh, to date. Uh, we have um, one one investor that's come on in the last month and a half before our beta was done uh, for a convertible note. We've done some private token sales. Um, you know, for a small amount of money. So our goal is to get through the convertible node stage um, as we are. We are The term sheet that we have from a private equity firm is via convertible node as well um, with an exit with a certain amount of equity in the company. Um, you know, so we can talk about that that as well. But, um, you know, that's that's kind of, you know, we're, we're, we were there leading through the STO. It has a lot of buzz, but I don't really see you know i haven't really seen much traction on people investing in, in the stos that's still kind of unknown i think it's just another w word to skin the word ico and do it in a you know in, in a reg d compliant manner um our our token sale is completely reg d compliant you know like i mentioned our chief legal counsel is former you know sec and um you know he was the leading attorney last year in one of the biggest capital raises in the crypto space i think around 1.5 billion um, so he's very, you know, we're very confident that we have something that we're not going to be dinged by the SEC and that we, 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 we paid attention to the, the regulations and we built something uh, around that. So we're, we're confident that we're doing everything because we do want to go public one day. We do have an exit strategy in place, you know, uh, and we're not going to do that if we, if we do things the wrong way. <laughs> right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you my email. Can you send me your executive summary, your term sheets? Um, and also, in order to send me the term sheet, my executive summary, your deck, and also some of your user adoption strategy that you have, I would like to go sure. through those details to understand. Because our fund, we we mostly invest in uh, sports startups, but at the same time, I sit on other multiple funds board, so I can help you out okay. on that. Um, they are seed stage investors in my, and at the same time. What I can do is that I would like to see the technology part and understand how you are uh, working on the white labeling part um, and uh, also trying to see that how the strategic partners are working with you. I think that needs some detailed conversation. So I'm definitely going to go through the details. Maybe send me the details in an email and maybe I'll set up another call with you. Uh, whether sure. it's sure. investors' life or separately, we can go through the details. I, I would like to understand further about technology and other things. And also definitely um, your team, I think that's very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'd love to share with you. I'll, I'll certainly send you that information. And I, I think that just real quick on the user adoption strategies, you know, we have uh, spending rewards. So people are, you know, can earn significant amount of cash just by spending at the, you know, their favorite retailers, which everyone has. Um, but we have some unique things there. Uh, another thing that we're doing with our rewards token, um, mobile payments and is, is, is changing everything. 95% of China is cashless. Right. Uh, so this is a security token, right? What's that? This is a security token, right? 
No, no, this is not this is not a security. This is a this is a pure utility. It's a payment and, and rewards token. So it's not a security token. Okay, so how are you going to be compliant with SEC? Because SEC is like dead against utility token, right? No, it's 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 used in what they're using it. It's how it's defined, and even if they do deem it a security, we're still safe because all everything we're doing is in a Reg D compliant manner. So you know, so everything that follows, we have a seventy six page token sale agreement that is completely you know has all the risks. Everything that follows Reg D uh, compliance, we have um, you know letters, and you know we can share who your attorneys are and why they think that. But it's it's you know. Uh, we're we're not we're not doing a, a public a public sale in the U.S. anyways. Mm -hmm. um, we are we are considering doing a, a security token. Uh, we're looking at uh, Deal Box and some other uh, companies to do that, but we haven't fleshed that out 100 percent yet. And your company is U.S. based or offshore? Yes, yes, it's U.S. based. We're Delaware. Uh, we're a Delaware company now, um, located in Newport Beach, uh, but we are considering uh, going into Wyoming. Uh, we have a call um, scheduled from one of our investors to, to introduce us to one of the um, um, senators there that are trying to bring a lot of the blockchain and crypto companies because the new reg, uh, legislation, um, they're looking for blockchain and crypto companies to set up shop there in Wyoming. Okay, that's cool. Um, are you talking to Caitlin Long at Wyoming? What's that? Are you talking to Caitlin Long at Wyoming? No, no, I, not me. No, I haven't talked. Uh, I can tell you the, the person who was... Um, one second here because um well one of the other groups that we're talking to about doing an sto is in toro Capital. okay yeah i know them yeah yeah so um so in toro let me just look at my my text um i met with those guys in texas uh, a couple months ago and uh let's see here so his name is i mean it's okay i don't need the name but um Oh, okay. Well, Caitlin Long <laughs> is actually basically the co-founder of Wyoming Blockchain Coalition, so she's she's working very closely with the Wyoming government. So it's pretty good. Um, so that's why I kind of asked because I think Wyoming is doing great with blockchain technologies, whether they are branding the cows and other things. So they are taking the ledger at a very very different level, which none of the other state governments have adopted. So I, I definitely think the adoption strategy and also the adoption rate um, is very high in that state. And Wyoming has always been a trailblazer of, I mean, that's their history. So which is, yeah, that's surprising. History, yep. people get surprised over them. Like, that's their history. That's what they had, had always been. So I think, um, yeah, I would love to get to the details. Send me the details so that we can set up another call because there are definitely a lot of opportunities. And um, um, yeah. Let's continue the conversation. Uh, wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, appreciate everything. And then um, I'll look for your email and I'll send that to you uh, right away. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll also send you some of my available just to have another follow-up. Okay, sounds good. Thank Thanks you so very much. much. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Likewise. Yeah.